Welcome to my studio. I am Margot Allman and I have been an artist for over 67 years and you can see there's quite a lot of artwork around here. And uh, right now I have a retrospective at the Delaware Art Museum and I am represented in their permanent collection. Uh, you may have noticed everything is abstract and I would like to take you on a journey so that you can discover why I do what I do and the way I do it. For a long time I was fascinated by science and I thought about being a biochemist but I soon discovered that it would not use me totally, it would not use me mentally, emotionally and uh, intellectually and I was looking for something where I could give my vision of what the whole world was, the excitement of the world, the intensity of the world, the life in the world, all the wonderful things. And I wanted to give this. I guess I've always believed that uh, loving is more important than being loved. And I do believe I realized in the Brandywine tradition in the 50s that I was not going to be loved for the work I was doing then. And it just went with the territory, maybe someday. Uh, nature has always been my uh, incredible inspiration. And for a long time, I did what every young artist did and still do, uh, many of them uh, kept sketchbooks. And then I discovered photography and I just my sketchbook was photography in every place that I traveled all over the world. I took pictures of nature. You won't see any, any beautiful sunsets. You won't see any images that remind you of buildings. What you will see here, and I've opened up a couple of books of these and I can you know, move them. They are all of textures I've seen, places I've seen. Occasionally, you know, there'd be something as beautiful as a flower. I love sunflower seeds and in the winter. But both, I mean, so you went to beautiful Maui and what are you showing? Knot holes and, and dead crabs. But they were all things that really interested me because they were about nature. And, uh, the energy, uh, energy. If my work is not alive, I destroy it immediately. I want it to be exciting and vital and, and uh, there's never an end to it because there's so much to see, so much to explore. Uh, certainly for me, it's a calling. It, it is much more than a simple profession where one makes money or gets recognition or anything like that. Because I've been an artist for so many years, there are innumerable mediums, it seems, that I have used. There are two reasons for the mediums that I've used. Number one, I never had any money, so I scrounged a great deal. Uh, the first image I made as a printmaker was a piece of wood I found on the street. And because it was an unusual shape, I think it really fascinated people. So it was also the first person, I, uh, first piece I ever showed at a, in an exhibition. And it now is in the Delaware Art Museum collection and I believe in the retrospective as well. Uh, it is just natural if you love wood and you've been doing woodcuts for about 10 years that you might like to try something a little bit three-dimensional. I had a friend who made bowls and corners, of course, of bowls were just thrown out. And well, I took a corner and I had a pen knife and absolutely ridiculous, but it was free. I made my first little three-dimensional sculpture. They, uh, that started something. So then they got larger and we have one over here that's larger, but I mean really larger. They got so heavy that I could not lift them and tall. And then uh, I got fascinated by carving anything and very important to get to the other side to be able to see through it. Uh, of that series, I would carve cement, I would carve bricks, I would carve whatever I could find. 
and it ended up, I made a model for a 21 foot piece in Ferro cement, which is in front of Tidewater Direct in uh, Centerville, Maryland. So I moved from that into something that I thought would be soft. I started crocheting for a needle, a needle work show, thinking I'll do something feminine. Well, it ended up to weigh an incredible amount. And uh, it uh, is also in my retrospective show. And part of it is in the Delaware Art Museum collection. Well, I've always drew, and I drew in a number of materials, charcoal, and uh, I'm still drawing. And then I discovered really acrylic paint, and I've been working in acrylic paint for years since in all kinds of wonderful ways. There were a few other things. I made jewelry, and I made them out of strange materials. I found objects, I made some sculpture out of found objects, um, anything that comes to mind. I guess that's the way to put it. I worked with tiles and I, <laughs> I had a wonderful time uh, going to Turkey, which I'll talk about later. But in general, the whole idea of the medium is to explore it, but have something to say. It's what you're saying with the material that's important. It isn't just put a bunch of materials together. I mean, have something to say. As an example of this, I'm going to take you on a little tour of when I went to California and uh, they were diving for abalone. And this is a iridescent abalone shell, which just, I loved it so much that they gave me the shell. I came home and I wanted very much to make abalone as painting and you can see the same iridescence. So I had to buy iridescent paints so I could reproduce that. And at the time I was working in a series of like blocks and you can see it, that it's marked in blocks. Well, I had also gone to Turkey and in Turkey, although I thought I was gonna make sculpture, it ended up I was making uh, tiles. Tiles are all in squares. And this is an example of the tiles. So each one fits together. They were, um, you can take them all apart, you can change them around, but I love that idea and I brought them back from Turkey after I did them. And that made me realize that I could do that in general. And here is an example of one that is very close to being in, I believe this is since COVID, it's in 2020 and it's divided in tile types of shapes, which really is a throwback to doing this kind of thing. So everything is still in your head, it's how you put it together, how you add to it. So this is an example of kind of what happens and why texture and all these things change, but you do have a thread throughout and there is a reason for the choices that you make, even if many of them are not conscious at the time. Another example, and this is a very quick one, uh, when I discovered that oval was my salient form, the most important form, they started out flat, and I will show you later in uh, the COVID time, flat ovals. And then they became three-dimensional, and then there were holes in them, so you could get in and out, like. And this is typical of one. This is a little earlier than the COVID time. And here is a photograph where I began to get the idea of ovals, three-dimensional with openings. So my photographs are actually very important because that's almost like a sketchbook. And I kept that in mind and you still have an oval form. And there actually is a slight division there too. Well now, up until the present time, and now that I'm in COVID and I've been sequestered at home and I have a much smaller studio, I've had to move and uh, I now have been working and instead of doing much painting, I've been working in pen and ink and uh, I've been fascinated. I continued working with what I showed you before in the squares, 
but I did want to talk about this particular image right here, this little guy. Well, he's everywhere. Here he is again. Now, these are all recent, and I usually start out in black and white, and although I have it in reverse right now, you'll see there's more black and white in this one. They're all, except for that little guy, everything is more or less um, circles or ovals. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to make them three-dimensional and have that same shape. Well, this was the most complex one, and it, you can see the three-dimensional quality of the straight lines. So we have cubes, we have all kinds of things built in there, and we still have that same form. And then it's black and white. I usually start out in black and white. It makes it simpler. It's the most basic, much as I love color. You know, it's shape and form. And then here comes one in color with a big cube in the center and a bunch of other things. And the cubes and everything are in there. Uh, we have another one they're getting really very colorful. Again, you'll be able to see the cubes. Uh, this is not actually in order because this would be an earlier one where I added the first color, which was red. But there are a tremendous number of drawings. I'm only showing you a, through, but a few, but you can see how they are evolving. Well, then I wanted to start painting again. All right. I wanted to start painting again. And for quite a while, I've been kind of fascinated by the idea of frog type tape. Now, this is really funny because my son said, what the heck do you want that for? And I said, I don't know, but I'm sure I'll find something. And so I started working with frog tape. Well, that was a whole nother thing. I'm working on uh, plywood. I think this is the most successful. It's in layers and I used the tape and I just kept building it up in layers. Now, I'm not doing the three-dimensional things I was doing before, but they are interesting. I've never done much with sunsets, but strangely enough, that one somehow worked as a sunset. It's very simple. I'm afraid of sunsets because everybody's made them so corny. <laughs> and, uh, oh well, here's another one. <laughs> So you can see there are many things. I'm still exploring the frog tape, but I'm fascinated by it. And this is very recent. I'm still exploring. There are a couple of other little things I've been playing around with. I all of a sudden have a bunch of little canvases that are made of gold. So that kind of did three-dimensional forms on those. And uh, there are a few more frog tape ones. These are all, and these are all very recent. I haven't signed them. I, I'm not even sure they're going to last. Uh, I like this one though. And then there are textures that exist and go back to many of the textures I had in uh, my, my portfolio of photographs. And you can see some of these textures and many of these textures at the beginning of paintings that I've done. Uh, so there is a direct connection between everything from the very beginning of what I've done till now. And I'm still exploring, oh yes, and I forgot. Then somebody gave me a whole big bunch of tiles and then I started thinking about, well, why can't I just paint with acrylic on the tiles? So now I'm starting this, and I started, I, this is a, an old piece with circles on top of circles on top of circles. Again, it's not three-dimensional now, it was a different thing. I'm starting to do it. Now this is just in progress. This is definitely in progress. And I don't know, it's gonna have to be uh, coated with something so uh, it will not last. I mean, if I poured water on it, it would all go away. So it may not work, but I'm playing around with it. Depends what I put on top and how many layers I put on top of that. I do work in a series of layers. And 
uh, in the beginning, <laughs> I didn't have much money, uh, so I didn't use too many colors because they were expensive and I made them pretty thin because it was much easier and less expensive and I used a lot of mediums. So everything depends on the amount of space you have, the amount of time you have. Uh, when my kids were young and I <laughs> trying to find time to do the work was really difficult. And living with a mother who was full of marble dust or wood shavings in the house and it was good when we moved and had a huge studio and that's when I could do much larger things and now I'm back uh, in a smaller place I'm in a 55 plus community and therefore my work is changing again also uh, I can't really visit these full-size doors anymore uh, they were holocore doors because they were much less expensive than canvas. I mean, I couldn't afford the canvas, but the doors were inexpensive. One side was bad. I could fix it. I could have them cut down. Um, you learn. And all my small pieces, even the ones that you just saw, that was all throwaway from a cabinet maker who at that time didn't have digital stuff uh, where they could really use all the wood. It's been a wonderful journey. I love what I'm doing. I can't wait for the next day to find out what's gonna happen next. I, I, I just love this world. I love everything in it. I love everything I see. I wanna put it down and I wanna give it to the world. 